Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this BPCA webinar today on essential customer service skills. Um, thank you for everybody being here today. Um, just going to do a quick run through before we get started. Um, just as a quick reminder for everybody, I can't see or hear you. Um, obviously, you can see and hear me. Now, if you have any technical problems, so maybe a bit of sound or maybe a bit of visual or if the presentation is doing something you don't like, then there's a chat function. So it might be down the bottom of your screen. It might be to the right of your screen. Um, but yeah, if you have those technical issues, pop a pop um, a question in there or just let us know in there. And my colleague Kat is sitting on the background there and she'll keep an eye on um, whether or not there's any issues. And she'll pop up as well because I may not notice um, whether or not there's an issue. So I will rely on that. Um, we also have a Q&A section. Now, during the presentation, I'm, I'm going to be doing questions at the end rather than sort of in the middle and at the end, uh, just to keep things flowing. But at any point, whether it's right at the beginning or right at the end or in the middle somewhere, you have any questions for me uh, about the presentation, then put them in that Q&A section because that's what I'm going to be opening up at the end and I'm going to be seeing. OK, so the chat section is not for questions to me because there's a good chance I won't see those. OK, great. Uh, there's one CPD point today, if you which you would have done, you've pre-registered. Um, hopefully you've put in your uh, CPD number. Number or a BPCA registered number. And once we're done today, we'll have that list and we'll get your points uploaded for you. If you have any issues, obviously contact us afterwards. Um, if you are watching this um, not live, if you're watching it afterwards, um, then you can still get a CPD point. You're just gonna need to have to register that yourself. Again, speak to which other CPD provider that you use, okay? So one CPD point. Um, in terms of, um, so, th so the presentation today, um, normally obviously we do pests and pest species and you know practical implementation of what we do in pest management but we're doing quite a, a generic subject today uh, being customer service skills it it really is for everybody um whether you're new to the industry whether you're you might not even be in the pest control industry you might have come across this webinar and thought yeah do you know what customer service skills that applies to everybody doesn't it surely um so welcome to everybody we've got 115 participants today um, so and that keeps climbing. It's ticking up as we as we go along. So anybody that has joined after my introduction there and you've got any question about CPD, then put it in the chat section and we should be able to answer any questions you've got. OK, good. OK, let me start sharing my screen. My camera's positioned OK, isn't it? Great. OK, so um, bit of, so in terms of the agenda, I'll just bring that up so you can have a have a have a quick look. Um, I'll give you a bit of an introduction. So I'll be coming at this with a keeping field technicians in mind. Um, again, you, you guys out there who are watching, you might be in, in different areas of work, be it in the office or in the field or a bit of both. Um, but, you know, it will certainly be addressing the field technician's role in terms of customer service. Um, but really, as I said, it relates to every type of work out there, office, field or otherwise. Um, you know, the traditional perception of customer service is office based or maybe even retail sector, you know, going into a shop and having that face to face contact and that customer service element. That's what we think of maybe when we, we think of the word customer service. But actually, it applies to everyone in every, every industry. Um, throughout the world so really important and the other thing as well is that the other webinars that we've done you know over the years webinars or training they're, they're always quite specific with pests it might be a pest species or um, it might be you know invertebrates or uh, vertebrates or um, you know a trap uh, uh, use of traps and things like that quite specific whereas you know customer service as I mentioned before it is something we do every day you know we don't do you know bed bugs every day necessarily or you know rats every day whereas customer service it is something that we have to do every single day that we are working um, every element of what we do as soon as we for the customer in any way, shape or form, customer service is, is involved. So a really, really important thing to have a think about. Um, 
really, really wide subject, really large subject with lots of different um, ideas and skills that you can have and uh, lots of training courses you can go on. But, you know, we've got an hour today, um, so we'll, we'll keep it on topic with regards to, you know, hopefully some field technicians, loan workers. And also, again, it would apply to anybody working in the office or all of the above. Um, so, yeah, we're going to talk about what customer service is, um, the skills that are involved with customer service, and then relate it a bit more to the uh, pest management, pest professionals, um, and what sort of things you should consider. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see where we go with that. I've got a bit of a poll partway through as well. So just want to get your perceptions on what you find is important when you're out there. But, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. It's all, uh, all good stuff. So a bit of a different webinar today. Looking forward to it. OK, so um, in terms of first, you know, what is customer service, you know, kind of think, well, we kind of we know what that is, don't we? Um, but, you know, most people think of customer service as something that happens when people reach out to a business with a problem. Um, and that's really only half the story, though. Um, good customer service will actually prevent any of your customers from reaching out to you with a problem or a complaint. So that's one element of it. Um, but generally, it's, you know, supporting your customers throughout so that you can keep your customers. You know, it's not just when you're face to face with them or maybe if you work within an office, it's not just when you're emailing them. It's throughout the whole contact that you have with them. Um, and then you've got, you know, two main um, elements to this, and that's proactive and reactive. Um, both are really, really important. We're going to go into that a bit more in just a moment. And then, of course, this is a probably, you know, if anyone had a little competition to see how many times Natalie said manage your customers' expectations through webinars, you'd put, I'd probably clock up a good four or five times in each one because it's just so important um, to manage those expectations. Your customers have expectations. When they pick up that phone or get that keyboard out to email you or, um, you know, um, get in touch with you. They, they've got expectations and what they want to receive from you. So it's about you making sure um, that obviously you deliver that expectation and in a way that they can, they can enjoy and feel they've had a good experience. Okay. Customer service is definitely a constant thing. Constant. Um, let me just move on. Sorry, this has been a bit unresponsive today. There we go. So there are a lot of skills needed to perfect your customer service. Here's the, I've got 16 of them here. Um, some of you maybe are going to count them now, aren't you? Make sure there are 16. Yeah, uh, there's a few here for you to consider. Um, yeah, there are more, of course. You know, I've picked out some of the ones that I think are the most, most important. You can have a, a little uh, view of those now. I'm not going to go through all of them. But, you know, in my role here at BBC, I see a lot of great customer service. Um, yeah, of course, as well as some some questionable customer service. You know, it's part of my role. I'm the, you know, technical and compliance manager and that compliance bit. You know, I'm, I'm talking to you know, um, members all the time about what they're doing or what they're not doing, picking up when they're doing great things. You know, we talk about that and really give some good feedback. But also, you know, if there's some um, other elements that are not, not quite as good, we discuss it. And sometimes it can be customer service. You know, actually thinking about it in terms of compliance, customer service is actually a really big part of um say compliance issues or complaints issues and even even compliments you know normally when you think about it any compliments that you've received of course because you got rid of the pest but a lot of the time it's because you've been you know attentive you know you've been flexible you've had a positive um you know language and a positive approach with the customer you've shown great empathy all of these things here you know that 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 delivers a great customer experience um so it, it's really important that this goes hand in hand with the service that you're delivering your customers, the, the pest that you're dealing with or the routine inspections that you're 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 getting out there. Um, you know, and being a, a pest controller out there, loan working with customers, it is really important that you're always on top form. Um, don't just think, so, you know, how am I going to get rid of this pest? Don't make your way to a job or get that call and go, right, you know, I've, I've got bed bugs here. How am I going to technically get rid of this? Of course, that's important. That's a massive part of what you're doing. But, you know, also think, OK, how am I going to communicate with this customer? What history do I know about this customer? Have they got any, you know, particular personality traits that I, you know, I need to be aware of? Um, you know, what am I going to be promising my customer? 
you know, how how clear am I going to be with them? Um, you know, I may or, you know, you may talk about a few specific talents listed here throughout. You know, I'm, I'm going to mention them through specific ones mentioned throughout the webinar, um, the ones that are deemed really important. Um, and actually, so thinking about these, I say skills skills yeah you know um that, that everyone has you know time management problem solving you know personality empathy ability and things like that they're all really useful and i mentioned at the beginning that you know to use the q and a section to um uh, put questions to me not necessarily comments however um in this webinar today i'm going to move uh, I'll, I'll allow a bit more than just questions in there i'd quite like to know or to get your view of what you think is really important. You know, maybe you've had some experiences and afterwards you've sort of reflected on it and thought, you know what, I could have done better with that because I could have behaved in a different way or I could have, um, you know, gone about that in a different way or, or maybe I could have spoken to that customer in a different way. But also positive things, you know, you might have thought, you know what, I really smashed that. I really done a great job there. And yeah, I got rid of the pest. That was the great job. But that customer really appreciated the way that I dealt with them and the empathy that I had with them. Um, you know, as we know, pests are quite emotive and can be quite upsetting to people sometimes. So, you know, it's a really big part of what you do. So, yeah, throughout this presentation, I'm going to pick on a few of these, these elements here um, and maybe talk about them a little bit more. Um, before I do that, so I mentioned at the beginning, we've got proactive and reactive um, uh, customer service. So, for proactive customer, we all here at some point have employed the services of a skilled professional, you know, be it a plumber or electrician, a builder or hairdresser, even any kind of service. Now, what you want to do is think about what you expect from a first impression. That first impression is so important, um, you know, be it on the telephone be it email, be it text, be it face-to-face. -face. You know, these are all first impressions when a customer gets in touch with you and wants to, you know, whether it's a quotation or, you know, an urgent request for service, you know, that first impression is really, really um, important. You know, think of all the things you are multitasking with, um, you, you know, and you don't even know it. You're, you know, you're, you're, you're making sure your language is good. You're making sure, you know, you're not swearing, maybe you're not, you know, chewing on some gum so that they can hear it. That first impression is is, is really important uh, when, when you turn up at site, you know. Maybe you've got you put some shoe covers on automatically. That's a great first impression. You know, the customer might say, oh, don't worry about that. But it's still a great first impression, isn't it? Um, you know, clean and tidy appearance. You know, I've had some, uh, you know, service providers um, come come to me and, you know, they've been busy all day and I completely understand. And for me, it doesn't really bother me too much when they turn up in, you know, uh, maybe unclean or untidy workwear because they've been busy all day. Of course, totally understand that. But maybe something to consider. You know, maybe having a, a change of clothes just in case you do get particularly dirty and you weren't expecting it. Now, of course, in this industry, if we think we're going to get a little bit dirty, we'll put our overalls on, won't we? But, you know, just something to, to think about that that tidy appearance is really important. And it's, it's very proactive to make sure, you know, that that customer experience is, is positive. Um, and of course, attitude. Oh my gosh, you know, a positive attitude as well. Um, even if you've had a really foul day, you know, we life is as it is and you know you may get to you know later on in the day three four five o'clock in the uh, afternoon going for a quotation or you've had a call out you know and you just maybe don't quite feel in the mood for you know delivering fantastic customer service but you know sometimes you've got to you've got to push through to these things put a smile on your face um and and greet that customer with you know some you know, great, um, some great personality and uh, positivity. Really important if we can do that because there's nothing worse than, you know, somebody turning up to, um, you know, that you may be employing in a, in a foul mood or making you feel like they don't really want to be there. Okay, so never have a think of that. We all have a bad day, but um, good to do it. So, and but just some more specific examples, um, you know, if you've got a long-term customer and, you know, quite a common thing we hear, you've got a long-term customer and they have a usual technician that's in charge of the site um, and, that, and that person changes for whatever reason, be it to annual leave or, you know, paternity or maternity leave or, you know, they might have even left the company and that technician changes. 
sometimes that can be, you know, confusing to a customer or, you know, upsetting to them. So pre-warning them of these things. Um, Again, it's managing their expectations and um, making sure they're informed of everything that's going on so that they feel involved. They don't feel like they've been forgotten and you're just carrying on doing what you what you do without worrying about them too much. So pre-warning them of these changes, um, you know, given customer help and assistance that is above and beyond. It's not always possible, but really a really fantastic way to put a massive smile on a customer or a potential customer's face if you just go that little bit above and beyond um just trying to think of examples off the top of my head you know if you're doing a mouse job in a kitchen you know there's that debate between oh you know whether you clean the droppings up or they clean the droppings up now you know of course in the industry we we want to say well actually it's a really great thing for the, the technician to do that you know always have a um, dustpan and brush there or a little mini vacuum cleaner or something that can clean droppings up because to the customer that's you going above and beyond possibly you know yeah in the industry we do we do recommend that that is a really a, an important part of um, monitoring for activity and seeing how bad an issue is but to a customer you know that that really does feel like you're going above and beyond so even just little things can make a real positive effect um, for, your, for your customer and, and telling them how long a job will last so you know, I go back to, you know, compliance issues or, or complaints and things like that and trying to prevent them. Um, what, what what the best way of preventing uh, complaints? Again, managing customers' expectations, um, but telling the customer how long the job will take. Um, I mean, for, for, you know, example, if you, you know, go to a, uh, a job and you say, yes, customer, I can I'm definitely going to get rid of this for you within three weeks. No problem. I'm going to get on with it and get it done. The customer's like, wow, brilliant. Really happy with that. Really um, excited that they're going to finally get rid of this rat problem that, you know, they've been um, going on for, for weeks, months, years sometimes. And then actually you find that, oh, yeah, three weeks wasn't long enough for me because there's an underlying issue in the drains or maybe the customer you know, you need to get access into a neighbouring property or, or whatever it may be, it could absolutely go over three weeks. In most situations, I find, you know, it, it does go over three weeks. So, um, you know, rather than saying, you know, I will get rid of this in three weeks, full stop, you would say, but the expectation is that, yeah, I, 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 I want to get rid of this within three weeks. It's possible I can get rid of it in three weeks. But, you know, as I go along with the work, things can change, things can pop up. Um, and if they do, I'll keep you informed throughout the whole process. OK, so that's that's, you know, telling, you know, that's that's managing the expectation, being proactive to prevent, you know, any future problems because um, you can promise too much. Um, but yeah, and, and being, of course, being, you know, in terms of being proactive, prompt and considerate, you know, if we say we're going to be somewhere, we be somewhere. Um, again, another thing that I see come through um, when, when there's, there's issues with, you know, customer to, to pest control companies, you know, if they say they're going to be there at three o'clock and, you know, three o'clock comes and goes and nobody's arrived. Um, it can be quite frustrating. I mean, we think about it, it's common sense, isn't it? You know, we think about it ourselves. If if you were to employ the service of someone and they you know get a delivery from you know a parcel delivery company and they say they're going to be there between eleven and twelve and you know one o'clock comes through and it still hasn't arrived, it's really really frustrating. So you know um, you know be prompt and considerate. And if you've got a genuine delay, of you know delays happen you know we're not in an ideal world here but keep your customer informed all the time um you know really really important managing expectations don't know why i just sang that but you know i say it a lot um okay so proactive really really important there's so many things and also you know, you're you are doing this you're, you're multitasking customer service skills and you probably don't even know it you think about it now and think yeah actually we're doing all those things you know um, and maybe some of these things you're not doing maybe you think well actually yeah maybe i am too specific with customers and telling them how long exactly this work is going to take um and yeah i wondered why they weren't happy with that of course they're not going to be when um it goes over the promised the promised time okay and then and then reactive of course so um it's usually when customers reach out to you so you know looking at what we've just talked about and what we're going to talk about here Proactive customer service is probably the biggest 
part of customer service, the, the biggest percentage of customer service. You spend most of your time doing proactive customer service. Um, and really, reactive customer service is, of course, when a customer reaches out to you. Um, now, you know, usually querying work or schedules, like I mentioned before, if, you know, you've said you're going to get something sorted within three weeks and you don't, um, they're going to be ringing up and questioning all oh, the technicians said they'd be done in three weeks, but they're not. And I'm wondering why these, you know, rats or bed bugs haven't gone yet. So, you know, again, your customer service will will kick in then. Um, we'll talk a bit more about the skills related to that in, in just a moment. Um, invoicing. So, you know, make sure you're clear and precise. That invoicing is a customer service element because, you know, when someone's paying for a service that they've received, you know, they want to have clear and precise information on what it is that they're paying for, um, you know, what work that you've done. You know, if there are any guarantees, if you do offer guarantees, you know, what that is, you know, being clear and precise, because, again, that gives them a great impression you know, if it's just a little scribble on the back of a bit of paper, um, you know, is that, you know, best customer service? Not sure. But again, when customers are contacting you, you know, that, that part is proactive, isn't it? If you think about it, the invoicing and making sure it's clear, it's actually proactive as well, because you're, you know, you're making sure you're uh, delivering that customer service um, and being clear on what it is you're invoicing for. But they can, it can also be reactive where they're requesting it from you. Um and then call out to contracts. Um, you know, your customer reaches out and says, oh, you know, we've got a contract with you, got, you know, 12 visits per year, but oh, I've noticed, uh, you know, an extra issue with a different pest or, you know, some activity from a contracted pest. You know, I need you to come and see me. Um, so, again, that's that's reactive. You're reacting to it. So it's really important in how you deal with those contacts. Again, I'll come on to that in a minute. Um, and then, of course, the dreaded complaint. Um uh, you know, the customer service will always be reactive sometimes when a customer queries something, especially, you know, if you've had a, a long day and you're just about to relax for the evening. Um, you know, you can sometimes feel frustrated when a, a customer reaches out to you to ask you about, you know, work schedules or invoicing or, you know, a call out to a contract or, or maybe even a complaint. Like I mentioned there, you know, it can be really, really frustrating, especially when you're you feel like you're you want to wind down for the day. But you must remember that, you know, the, the customer has a genuine question and requires information to make them feel more confident you know indulging this in a positive way will only secure you sort of a, a great impression and commitment to solving their problem you know it it's very easy to think oh my phone's ringing oh god I'm, I, I'm kind of you know had it for the day but as soon as you press you know um, that button to say hello you know that smile should go on your face and and listen to them because they, they've got a, a genuine query I mean, there's other ways around that, of course, if you've got, you know, um, if you manage a group of technicians, you know, they're going to be contracted to certain hours. So, you know, if there's certain hours that they're, they're breaking off, maybe leaving, making sure there's a, a polite and informative uh, uh, voicemail message for customers to receive. And, you know, um, that message can be as you as you wish. But of course, keeping in mind that, you know, you want it to be positive, you want it to be look, really sorry, we're not here to help you. You know, this is what you can do if it's an emergency. Um, however, if it's not an emergency, you know, leave a message and we'll get back to you, you know, tomorrow at whatever time. So again, you're, you know, it's not just ringing and going, you know, just ringing and ringing and ringing and then cutting off or just ringing and getting a generic, you know, please leave a message after the tone. Um, it, it can be frustrating for customers sometimes. They like to know they've got through to the person that they, they wanted to get through to and you're managing their expectations with that voicemail message, aren't you, to say, you know, sorry, we're not here, but we will get back to you. Um, really, really good to do that. And, and of course, things like annual leave or when somebody's off, you know, get those voicemail messages set up, you know, change them as, as, as your work changes, as, you know, your day changes so that customers ringing you at least can get something. If they can't get through to you direct, they've got some good information there. OK. Um, great. OK. I mean, I remember just in terms of the, the complaints, um, you know, to, to echo the words of a previous presenter that we had on one of our forums, I think it was which trusted trader. I think we had a representative from there um, uh, dealing with the subject of complaints. Done a done a whole webinar complaints on that. Uh, sorry, uh, a forum slot on on complaints, which you can go and have a look up now. It's on our website or on YouTube. But it was all dedicated to customer complaints and how to deal with it. And actually, one of their comments was that you know a complaint process can actually 
be positive and encourage your customers to complain. And that sounds really weird, doesn't it? But, you know, if someone's got a problem with something either you've done or one of your employees have done, isn't it important for you to know what that is? And if your customers, you know, feel like you care when something's gone wrong and you want to put it right, oh my gosh, you know, that that is so, so important. You know, again, drawn from an experience that, you know, I've had, um, you know, be it poor Wi-Fi connection or a fatty ribeye steak from a fancy food chain. You know, when my concerns are heard, taken on board and empathised with, I'm happy. You know, that's all it is. You know, if I've got if I've got a problem with something and I go to that supplier and say, look, this wasn't what I expected or, you know, what you promised me didn't happen. If they have a positive um, comeback for me and they, you know, empathize with me and make sure that, you know, um, the solution that I wanted is met as re- as far as is reasonably possible or practical, of course, because I'm not unreasonable, then I'm happy. And that's great. And I'll carry on using their services. I'll carry on buying their ribeye steaks. You know, it's um, it's just common sense. Whereas if I had a really negative reaction and a really negative response to a complaint that I had, then it's very likely I wouldn't go back again. Okay. And, and as I said, things like on your website, um, it's, it's good to have a complaints process is something that we like to talk about when we go and see members. Um, but having a having an area where someone can can say, yeah, actually, I've got a problem, um, because that is actually a positive thing. You know, that rather than, you know, going to, you know, come into an association to tell us about you or, you know, go into a, a higher authority to complain about you because they think you've done something wrong or illegal, get them to tell you. Encourage them to tell you when they've got a problem, okay? Because then you can sort it out and you can keep that customer. Because as we know, that customer can go on to many other customers, okay? Good, okay. You will know, like I like ribeye steak now. Okay, so in terms of the provision of customer service, then some basics, um, you know, just some kind of things to do um in in different contexts so you know with a telephone call now this is a telephone call whether you're getting a call about oh i need your help i've got a pest problem or if it's a i've got a problem with you you've done something that i'm not happy with or an invoice call then just you know just make sure you're when you when you're on the phone if you're smiling and talking it can actually transmit through that phone people can tell whereas if you've had a really foul day and you think well they can't see me it doesn't matter i'll just you know um, you know, lie here on my sofa with a, you know, <clears throat> frown on my face talking to them. They could probably pick up on that. It's quite quite amazing what we can pick up on. So, you know, try and have that that smile when talking. And, you know, like I mentioned before, if you um because it's you know it's important that you have downtime. You know, everyone's different. Some people are happy to work till 10 p.m. at night, but you know, really you should be restricting yourself to a degree. And certainly if you've got technicians, employees, you have a legal responsibility to make sure their contract terms are met and that they have a cutoff time to be able to, you know, um wind down for the day and relax. So after certain times, you can have voicemail messages that that cut in. And again, you know, make it a great one, make it a you know, hi. You know, sorry, we're not here, you know, but hey, get in touch with us this way instead. Or I'll give you a ring in the morning, leave a message, you know, make it really, really positive And, um, you know, uh, a way that customers can feel, you know, like they're like, like, like you care and you want their business. Um, you know, text, if you're if you're utilizing text, don't ignore it. You know, um, I suppose it's quite hard to not utilize text, isn't it? Because a lot of our. Uh, work is done through mobile phone contacts now you know if you've got an office you've probably got a landline that that, that's great but you know technicians have mobile phones and customers generally get hold of those numbers um so you know texting can be frustrating but you know got a responsibility if you've got a mobile phone and a customer is texting you um then the manager expectations if it's something that you know you don't want to continue you can give some positive good guidance on how else they can get in contact with you on a more preferred way, but don't ignore it. You know, if customers text you, don't ignore it. Um, of course, you know, if there's, if it's a very 
negative reason they're texting you and uh, maybe there's been a problem with some work or there's some complaints going on and they're hassling you um you know and if you gen- yeah, you, sometimes you can genuinely feel um victimized by by a customer or if you you've been unfortunate enough to come across a particularly tricky one that you you feel you're getting hassled by um then you know you can either um, you, of course you can feel it's threatening in any way you know get a, get a crime number report it to the police and they might be able to do something i've certainly had that before threatening voicemails and things like that and um yeah reported it myself and it all got sorted out so that was fine but you know the point is if you're using text um don't ignore it it's very frustrating for customers okay um and that's a, a reactive side of of customer service um social media as well so i'm not a social media expert my colleague kat who's on here with me in the background keeping an eye on things social media expert fantastic brilliant it, you know i'm probably facebook and that's about it i'm not great with the with much else but if you have it you know you monitor it reply and interact positively um you always see the you know um different travel sites where people report you know negative experiences of a hotel or a, a bnb they've stayed in and it's always great to see when those those managers of those hotels or the owners of those bnbs actually reply to that complaint or reply to that concern they had and say look really sorry about your negative experience um you know we're, we're going to do this to try and put it right and you know please give us a ring if you want to chat about it anymore that's great that that person who had a complaint is possibly then going to think do you know what that was a, a great response yeah just one of those things that went wrong i think it was uh and everybody else looking at those um, messages are going to see it in a positive light as well. Uh, again, if you're using social media and people, you know, send you, OK, private messages, no one can see. But if they're putting posts on your wall or asking you questions on there, you know, get back to them. Be positive. Don't don't use, you know, foul language. I see it a lot with social media platforms, groups, you know, not just pest management groups, but other industries. They all have their own, uh, you know, um, uh, pages and they they chat and share things. And, you know, sometimes the, the language can be concerning and, um, you know, and members of the public can get access to that sometimes and it, and it won't look particularly good. So, you know, keep things positive. It's, social media is a massive thing now. It wasn't a problem 20 years ago <laughs> necessarily, but um, it's a really big part of uh, reputation and, and, and again, you know, in terms of this webinar, customer service. So monitor it, reply, interact positively. Um, and we're always happy to help you with, um, you know, any social media questions you have, any guidance on it. Um, again, as like I said, you know, we've got a lot of in-house experience with social media and how to manage it. And we'd be happy to, you know, have a chat to you about that if you want to get into it a bit more. But really good for customer service. Um, email, of course, if you're, you know, email's email. Um, you know, <laughs> emails can be the the devil sometimes because you know how one person reads an email, another may read it differently, and it could be positive or it could be negative. Um, so you know you need to be careful with the wording. Always use positive words, upbeat words. Um, you know, all great to hear from you. Thank you for your email. You know, rather than too brief for responses, I see that a lot as well. Again, dealing with with complaints and compliance issues. Um, you know, emails that have gone back and forth from customers. Um, they can be very blunt sometimes, and that's only going to encourage um, possibly more more upset or more more anger, which is going to fuel a complaint to be pushed further into the system. So, yeah, really, you know, think about the way you use them, but also auto reply messages. They really help. Um, you know, if just again managing expectations. I said it again. Should have a drink every time uh, I say it, shouldn't I? But you know, um, if you're out of the office or you know, particularly busy, or you think, oh, we're really, you know, we're really busy and we're going to struggle to get back to email straight away. I just have an auto reply for that day. You know, really sorry, we're really busy today. And we'll get back to you as soon as we can within 24 hours, 48 hours, whatever it is that you decide is appropriate for your organization. Um, and, and then in terms of face to face, so for, you know, technicians out and about there, like I mentioned before, um, appearance, body language, tone, expressions, promptness, all these things are, uh, are really important. All of these points of contact involve customer care, all of them, you know, be it telephone or face to face. Um, you know, all of you watching can tell us what what you find works well. Again, like I said, you know, in the Q&A section uh, for one time and one time only, I will allow other things other than questions. Um, but yeah, because I'd like to read them out. You know, I'd like to read out all, oh, you know, um, Bob or Jane here has said that, you know, 
um, they find this works because it's going to be positive you guys here that are joining me today. You might sort of think, actually, that's a really good idea. I'm going to implement that. So, yeah, again, share us your experiences. Share us what you do and what you find works well. Um, that would be good. But, yeah, as I said, face to face, if you, you know, um, you know, like me now, maybe, you know, OK, I, you know, I wouldn't say I've a full face of makeup on or anything like that, but I've got a BBC shirt on. I'm trying to present in a way that, you know, it's got a good appearance, a good body language and tones and expressions to, you know, make sure, you know, you know that I want to be here and you know that I'm here to help you and take on questions and hopefully give some answers and be positive and actually make you enjoy the experience of a webinar. Um, some of you might disagree, but, you know, that, that that's my, my goal is it's not just to, you know, give you technical or, 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 you know, detailed information. It's to hopefully make you feel engaged with so again, face to face, the appearance and body language, tone expressions. You know, if I was sat here, you know, my hand like this and talking to you, I don't know who can see me, but you know, I'll sit there like that, reading off of the presentation. You probably can't hear me that well, so my microphone's down here. But also, it doesn't look great, does it? it doesn't look great with me uh, kind of resting on my hand. You know, maybe giving you the impression that I'm not enjoying myself, of which I am. I love being here with you guys. So, um, but really important, face to face. Uh, paperwork so clear consistent information as well um <laughs> i've picked all of these ones because they're very common things to see pop up that cause problems um that are all customer facing paperwork is a customer service element if you are dealing you know not only we're talk, not going to talk we're not here to talk about bpca codes of practice or you know legal requirements of paperwork i'm here to really say that you know having clear consistent and informative paperwork is a great tool to tell your customer what you've done, um, you're the right person that they've employed, and they're going to receive, you know, a great service over the next few weeks, days, whatever it is you're doing for them. Um, and yeah, you know, it's something that they've got for when you walk away, something that you can read. Um, one of the one before last webinars that we've done, I mentioned on, on bees, we have that why we didn't treat your bees leaflet. I mean, again, that that's great customer service. If you, you know, Again, you might do a treatment report. We've not done any treatment, but rather than just going, oh, I'm not going to do them. They'd be, see you later, bye. You give them a leaflet. You give them and say, look, this is why I'm not doing it. Something for you to read while I'm not here because, you know, I'm going to get off to the next job. If you've got any questions, give us a ring. But most of the information you need is in here. Um, again, give me a call if you if you find um, any, any future issues or you get to the point where you've got some more questions that aren't answered here. So you're leaving something with them. And that is... That is great. That, that that's what they they like to like to see. Blimey, time's time's flying, isn't it? Um, so absolute no. So they're all the things that are great to do to think about, you know. Um, but yeah, in terms of <laughs> things we didn't do, the obvious things maybe you'd say, but rudeness. Um, but actually, in this job, because you know of what we do, you can get some really upset um, customers, some really agitated customers some really you know they almost you, you almost feel like they may be overreacting that's a that's an absolute no word to use overreacting I didn't put it in here but um I just thought of it there yeah don't ever say customers overreacting that's an absolute no you know the words that we use are really important you know um in terms of you know customers another negative thing is is blaming your customer for something negative is a never a good idea so try Try to avoid blame on your customer, even if it is their fault. I know it, you might sometimes think, well, they didn't you know, do that thing I asked them to do before I got here. And now I can't do the work and they're getting angry with me. So, you know, for example, a common one, um, bed bug treatment, um, advice via email. You might send some advice via email or text saying, you know, these certain measures here that you need to carry out before I come along to assist with a successful treatment. We all know what I'm referring to. Um, and then on arrival, you find that nothing's been done. So rather than, you know, accusing your customer directly, tempting, I know, uh, maybe put a different spin on it, such as, oh, so you didn't receive the pre-treatment information. Oh, that's strange. We should have sent it. I'll check with the office and see if there was maybe an error on the email name. Can I take your email again so I can check this? It's a much more positive way rather than, well, I asked you to do this stuff. If you haven't done it, then I'm off. I'm not going to do it with you. I definitely sent it to you. Must be a problem that you've got. It must be an email problem you've got. 
this is all very negative language to you. So rather than, you know, um, putting it back on them or blaming them for something that's gone wrong again, like I said, even if it is their fault, um, try to use language that's a bit more positive um, going forward. This is ideal world stuff, I know, but really, really great to think about that way that you put things across. You know, and that, that's rudeness, isn't it? You know, using things like calm down. Even if you're saying it now, you know, just calm down, just calm down. That can still come across as, as quite, um, uh, you know, um, unempathetic and uh, it can actually aggravate things more. Um, so, you know, other things like you misunderstood me. Again, you're accusing the customer of something there. You're accusing them of misunderstanding. You're always telling them they're stupid. Um, so, you know, rather than saying calm down, you know, you'd say, well, cool, let's both sit down and have a, have a talk about this. Maybe, um, you know, it's not nice to, to get upset. I can see, that, you know, um, maybe a bit uh, stressed out by this. Let's have a sit down and we'll have a nice talk about it. OK, rather than saying calm down and, you know, it can be tempting. Um, and, and also maybe, you know, maybe I miscommunicated that information. So, again, rather than you misunderstood, it could be a maybe I miscommunicated the information or. Maybe I didn't communicate it in a way that was understandable. Apologies about that. What I actually meant was, so really, really important in trying to um, use different words, use different terms, avoid getting frustrated and, you know, being rude. Um, it can be easily done, certainly in this industry, because there's a lot of high emotions sometimes. Um, and, uh, you know, o overstepping as well. Um, I hope it doesn't happen too much. I don't know, but sometimes it could be tempting to to blame colleagues or or, or blame organizations you know like that email example oh did you not get that email about the uh, pre-treatment things you need to do oh blooming office they always do this they always uh, forget to send that email out oh, i'll go and have a talk to them yeah it's quite that's overstepping really you're negatively referring to a company or a colleague um so you know thinking about what you're saying it's tempting sometimes to deflect a problem from you onto somebody else because you're there you're face to face with them you're thinking oh did we not send that oh oh this is this is this is awkward embarrassing oh I'll reflect that onto somebody else and blame the organization because that's easier it can be tempting to do but yeah overstepping is a thing try not to to do that because again, even though you personally, it might not be them reflecting badly on, it's reflecting badly on the company, isn't it? So that is not good for anybody. Um, and then the last thing, so overpromising, you know, in, instead, you know, um, you know, with regards to, let's say, like I mentioned before, I've kind of already gone over this, but um, yeah, a rodent problem, three weeks, um, you say, yeah, I'm definitely going to get rid of that for you in three weeks. I'll see you in five minutes. See you later. Bye bye. Uh, rather than doing that, because then when four weeks comes around and the problem's not gone, you're going to have more problems than if you said um, in an ideal situation, I will try to get rid of your rodent problem within three weeks. That's what I normally achieve. But each site's different. Um, I need to come and have a look. I need to have a survey. There could be underlying issues. So, but I'll communicate with you through the whole process. Don't you worry about it. Okay. That's a lot more, um, you know, refreshing for a customer. Um, and you're not, you're not over promising. You're not saying that you're going to do something that there's a chance it could not go that way. Yeah. And bed bugs is a, a really common one, really common one, because as we know, you know, there's in a lot of situations they can go on and on and on. Um, really tricky, but so, yeah. Um, you know, and, and, and just a, another thing in terms of absolute no's, um, you know, I'm a fan of a, an odd mint from time to time, you know, feel refreshed and, you know, I enjoy them. And also it helps me stop eating all the time. Um, but, you know, I wouldn't turn up at a customer's property chewing on said mint or gum, you know, um, it's just some really simple things, isn't it? You know, when you're talking, so when you, if you're on the phone, people can hear if you're chewing or sucking on a mint. Um, so, yeah, just little things like that, absolute no's, okay? Um, in terms of facing confrontation, so um, avoid it by, you know, monitoring your verbal language, your body language, expressions. You know, this is not a, a, 
a, a, a, about humans webinar or a biology and behavior session on humans. But, you know, we're, we are all humans and, uh, you know, lots of other humans. And we know that we can be motivated or demotivated by, you know, simple things like, you know, someone's body language or verbal language towards us. It can cause certain emotions. We're all different in, in what that would cause um, expressions as well. You know, you could have great verbal language and positive and great body language, but your expressions like this or rolling your eyes, you know, so really, really important. Um, and like I mentioned before, um, email can be the devil in disguise. You can, you know, cause confrontation by, you know, delivering or sending an email that's um, not too descriptive or has got a lack of um, positive expressions or words or, or signals. So yeah, yeah, it's important to, you know, the training, you know, training on email delivery can can be a thing. Um, I think that's really important. If you've got new employees coming in and they're going to be dealing with emails, do a bit of email training. You know, the things to do and the things not to do. Um, good stuff to do. Um, so also, you know, we've got to face the facts. Like I mentioned, we're humans. We are complicated beasts. Um, and in terms of customer service, is everybody designed to be great at customer service? Of course not. That's an ideal world, isn't it? We're all going to have different levels. I mean, you know, some would say that I'm pretty amazing at customer service. Um, others, well, I'm money joking, by the way. I can hear all my colleagues laughing. Um, but all seriousness, you know, in terms of people, I generally see there's three types of people. And that's, you know, they've got a personality that is perfect for good customer service. And what I mean by that is they're just natural. They're, they don't really try at it. It's not something they have to think about or have to be trained in. They're just jolly, happy, considerate people that, you know, like to make other people feel informed and um, confident with what they're doing. And, you know, they've just got the personality for it, you know, be it the way that they present themselves, the way they hold themselves, you know, the way their body language is, it's just natural. You know, they've just got that natural flow. Um, so of course, you know, they're, they're perfect, aren't they, for customer service? Because they enjoy it. You know, when someone enjoys customer service and they enjoy making someone happy and making someone smile, you know, it's noticeable. And, you know, customers absolutely love that. Um, so that, that's, that's the, you know, one type of person. And then also you've got the sort of people that have the right, at, the right attributes for good customer service, but maybe need a little training or, um, you know, maybe they wouldn't be the front of shop person. Now, okay, I'm moving away from technician a little bit here because you're a technician, you're a technician, you know, you are who you are and you're going to deliver what you deliver in terms of customer, customer skills. But, you know, maybe sales, you know, if you've got a company, that's a little bit larger and you want someone, you know, one of your employees to get into sales, you know, you're probably going to pick that person that, you know, has got the perfect personality for customer service because, again, you know, it's going to be a good impression, um, you know. But, again, you can still get those ones that are in the middle a bit there. They've got the right attributes and you're totally happy of sending them out there. Maybe a little bit of training, you know, webinar like this just as a little refresher for them to go, you know what? Yeah, some good points there. I'll, I'll remember that when I'm out there. I'll take that gum out of my mouth and I'll put those shoe covers on and because that's customer service customers will appreciate that um and then maybe you've got those people that are really not people persons people persons people i don't know is that a word anyway phrase um those people that are, are not really desirable in terms of you know really front facing and, and sometimes acting can come into play acting in customer service is a thing you know like i said before if you have had a foul day and you're going to see a customer to quote up on a job, you don't necessarily let them know you've had a foul day. So you act, put a smile on your face. Yeah, I'm jolly. I've had a fabulous day. How are you, customer? How can I help you? Yes, I'm wonderful. Thank you. And then when you go home, you can collapse on the sofa and, uh, you know, have a cup of tea or whatever. Um, so acting does come into play. And for those you know people that maybe aren't, you know, really people persons let's just go with that phrase shall we <laughs> um you know again you know they'll uh, maybe a little need a little bit more support a little bit more encouragement um and again you know you might choose the roles that they would do um but yeah recognizing the skills of individuals and adapting is really important um and giving them that that get up and go that they need to to hopefully have that you know perfect personality 
can't change personalities, but right. Okay. Blimey. Time flies, isn't it? I'll uh, shoot through these last bits so we can get to some Q and a bits. We've had two pop up in there. So yeah, not, not a massive amount. Keep them coming if you need to. Um, so in terms of pest management, you know, lots of the stuff I've been talking about, you know, I'm saying I'm going to address pest management specifically now, but actually we've been doing that all the way through, haven't we? Um, but th there's one thing that's true when pests get into homes, people want them gone. Full stop. Of course, when it comes to customer service before and during the work order, um, it's important to remember that while your clients are grateful, they may also be dealing with one of the worst, scariest and most upsetting situations of their life. I mean, you might think I'm exaggerating, but, you know, we've all had that customer that is just beside themselves. And, you know, in your mind, you might be thinking, gosh, you know, they're, they're really not happy about this, you know, I don't know, a uh, wood louse or something that's, that's come in through the door, but it's very personal. And, you know, th there are genuine fears out there and we really need to be empathetic of that. Um, and I use that word, I'm going to come to that a bit sooner because it's very important. Um, but, you know, we're a service and not a product. So customer service, we're, we're half of that statement, aren't we? We're a service, okay, not a product. And it's really important that, you know, when someone are, rings us up to deliver that service, it can be, you know, it's, it's, we really are at the heaviest end of customer service. There can be some really high emotions involved and dealing with that in the right way is really important. Um, you know, customers may be desperate. Empathy versus sympathy, like I mentioned. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry, my voice going already. Um, so empathy is the ability to understand and share the feelings of another. So, for example, you say to somebody when you're there and they're distressed, you would say to them, I can imagine that this is stressful for you. Pests are a genuine public health risk and it's important we help you with this. That's empathy. Whereas, um, you know, sympathy is similar, but easy to confuse um, and it's not half as useful. Um, so sympathy is the feeling of pity or sorrow. And we all know that word pity and sorrow. It's negative, isn't it? Um, so, you know, to, when you're being sympathetic, you may say something more along the lines of, oh, don't worry, dear. It's horrible for you, isn't it? Don't worry. I'm not afraid of them. So I'll sort it out for you. You know, the difference here is important. You know, you need to be empathetic, not sympathetic. Um, you know, make, let them know that you share their 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 concerns and that you're uh, familiar with their concerns and you're going to help them. Not, ah, uh, you know, you're overreacting a bit, aren't you? But don't worry, I'll sort it for you. Not the right way to go about it. OK, so I mentioned before, you know, what customers want. It's important, isn't it? We want to deliver what a customer wants. And it's that the pest is gone, that's all. Um, so, you know, and of course, maybe you would like a pleasant experience. They, they want the pest gone, but they, they want to have a pleasant experience, don't they? Um, you know, it's easy. <laughs> you know, how do you, um, how you do that is up to you. Get rid of the pest. You know, there's many different methods and tools that you can use in investigations, but don't just think about the technical aspect of getting the job done. You need to also consider that customer service and be a customer service with, you know, marry them together. You'll go, you'll go far. Um, so, again, this is a bit of a poll coming up now. Now, this is the first one on a poll, so I'm relying on Cat being as serious for me. So, um, for Cat Pots It Up, let me just explain. So, I've picked out a few skills here. Um, what I want you to do is rank them in your opinion. So, I say rank them, I haven't got there. I want you to pick one of them. Um, that is what you feel is the most important one to you. Um, then we just get a, an interesting idea of, so there's 153 of you guys here now, so it'd be good to get, get a view of, of which ones are important to you. So Kat, if you can pop up the poll quickly. Fabulous. Um, and if you can all just, I don't know, is there, there's about 15, 20 second jobby. I would sing a song, but no one's going to enjoy that. You'll all just disappear, won't you? Um, Four fifteen. So I'm going to end the give the poll in another three seconds. Three, two, one. Going to end it. Um. So, oh, okay. So forty three percent of you reliability. 
So basically does what they say they're going to do. That's the, that's the larger end of you. 43% of you feel that reliability is the most important aspect here. And then second, very close, 40% is good communication. Now I know a lot of you will be like, oh, I want to click on all of them. I, I think all of these are important. I've put them up here for a reason. They're all important. But it's just a quick, you know, oh, stop your head. What's most important to you? And yeah, reliability and good communication. Great. Um, we've got no one there for empathy. Oh, don't want to be empathetic, do you? No, of course, you know that's important. Um, it's just not top of your list. Being reliable and good communication absolutely is going to get you a long way. So interesting to see. And then we've got efficient and on time is 10% and 4% reassure. And again, it's not saying you don't think these things are important. It's just top of your list reliable and you communicate well fabulous that is exactly what we want to hear i'll just share the results there you can probably all see it um yeah good okay i'll close that there we go it's exciting wasn't it okay great thanks everybody for getting involved with that really good to see that that you're on the same lines as as, as i am okay um let's go we're nearly done there so just a bit of a you know again do's don'ts um, so obviously you don't ever be late, you know, prompts this, it's going to happen. If you are going to be late, tell your customer, manage their expectations. I'm going to sing that whenever I say it, manage their expectations. You're going to be late. Tell them as soon as possible, because you think they're going to possibly have booked time off of work for you to come around. So really important. Even if four hours before the job, you think, oh, there's a chance I'm going to be late, inform them. They can make their own decision on whether or not they're going to hang around, um, inform them. Don't be vague and uncertain uh, or get distracted when you're on site. So, you know, like now I'm on this webinar with you. I thought, oh, hang on a minute, everybody. I've just got a little phone call I'm going to take. Bear with. You ain't like that, would you? OK, this is a more you know structured webinar. And of course, that would never happen. But, you know, when you're on site and you're talking to a customer and your phone rings. Again, talk about that voicemail message that's there. Make sure you've got a great voicemail message that says, oh, I'm really sorry I'm not available. I'm probably with a customer, but leave me a message. I'll get back to you. OK, um, don't turn up in grubby clothes or missing tools. Missing tools is very frustrating. You know, oh, I'm going to get in the attic, but I haven't got a ladder. Um, really frustrating for customers. Um, don't be condescending or amused by their fear. Mentioned it before. Um, or be disinterested about their concerns. You know, remember, we kind of like, Hey, it's a bed bug. Hey, it's a rat. Hey, it's a cockroach. We like them. It's fun. We're not bothered about them. But that is not their view. They're going to be possibly, you know, at, at best, a bit disgusted by them, but possibly at worst, absolutely terrified. So, you know, don't be disinterested and don't redirect your frustrations of the day. And, uh, you know, don't focus on yourself. You know, it's good to share your experiences with customers, but don't stand there for 10 minutes telling them about a story, something that happened to you once, you know. You might be interested, but they might not. Try and not focus on yourself too much. Um, and then a bit of a summary. So, you know, treat your customers as you would want to be treated. Common sense, isn't it, really? Um, be a pleasure to be around and make customers feel important. Of course, common sense again. Empathetic, not sympathetic. And, oh, there it is again. Manage all expectations. Right. Questions. Fish, bash, bosh. Uh, what, three of them? Great. Okay. So you've got some stuff going on in chat there. Hopefully Kat's dealing with that and you're all happy, but bringing up some chat here. Um, so listening, yeah, John, John Joster here, very good point. So listening is a very important part of customer engagement. That, that was a test there as well. I, I left that bit out. I was making sure uh, he picked up on it. Um, but yeah, listening, absolutely. There's nothing worse than if, you know, someone's trying to, you know, get across their feelings or, or, or what's happening with a job and, you know, you cutting in all the time. Or, you know, kind of looking as though, you know, you're a bit bored of what they're saying, um, even if you kind of know what they're getting at and you think, Christ, they're going on a bit here. Um, you know, just try your best to sort of keep that listening hat on and only interject when it's appropriate and you feel that they've got, you know, um, a decent pause there that allows you to talk. So listen. Good one, John. Um, so Trevor here, you carry deodorant just in case that honestly, that you know, carry that is so important. Bit of deodorant in case you, you know, you've been in a an attic somewhere, you know, rooting around trying to find that, you know, squirrel dray or you know, where those rats are coming in, you know, it can get hot in there, especially in summer. So nothing worse than turning up at a customer's house smelling um, particularly unpleasant. So yeah, Trevor, absolutely carry some deodorant. Um so where on your website would you put how to complain? That's from Emily. So really good, really good question. Some, 
In terms of complaints processes, some websites are not clear in where you can complain. Um, they're actually quite hard to find because the organisations want it to be hard to find, um, be it right or wrong way. Um, for me, my preferable thing is having a um, maybe a, a somewhere on your website that says feedback question mark or do you have some feedback for us and have it as you know compliment and complaint because you do want to encourage customers to tell you when stuff's right as well it's less likely to happen as we know again that's just a human element we're always going to you know that you're always going to get more feedback that's negative than is positive unfortunately but maybe even trying to encourage that positive feedback you know having at the end of your treatments, a follow-up email or a follow-up text saying, you know, I hope everything went well for you. You know, if you've got anything, you know, great to say about us, please visit our website and let us know. Um, also, if you, you know, if there is anything that you've got concerns over, you know, contact us on, you know, X, Y, Z. Um, but I think having it on your website so that it's it's noticeable and, and your customers can find it is a positive thing. Um, I, I, that's what I personally think. But in terms of the designs of websites, Emily, I mean, I wouldn't know where to put it. I'm not a website expert, but I think visible um, is important. I, I That's my personal opinion, though. That's not, you know, fact or uh, it's, it's just my personal opinion. Um, so, Marwa, uh, so what about dealing with difficult customers or when you have many people to deal with? For example, the financial department who resist in payment and make huge delays um, but it keeps, uh, but it keeps to be keeps to be an important client. But it is a, an important client. I think that is. So, I mean, there's no one answer for every situation in terms of difficult customers. Um, so, if you're if you're a BPCA member in any way, shape, or form, give us a call. Give us a particular situation you've got, and we and we can talk through with you. You know, we've got varying amount of experience within the BPCA. You know, we've had we've got business owners, previous business owners, obviously our boards and committees. You know, I've got my own experience, and you know, we'll probably be able to help you with with dealing with it. But when it comes to payments and and delays in that, I mean, you know, <laughs> when it comes to customer service with that, that that's um, a different thing altogether, isn't it? So. Um, you know, having your own processes for chasing payments and having terms and conditions in your contract so that you can follow up on them. And, you know, if you've got to take legal action, you have to do these things, don't you, to, to get the money that you need. But look, walking away from financial concerns, you know, just generally difficult customers, that comes down to the personality thing, doesn't it? Um, you know, how I would deal with a difficult customer is different to what maybe John or Trevor or Emily might have um, dealt with a difficult customer. You know, it's about dealing with them in a way that gets them what they want but also um what you feel is is owed to them and as an association we are always here and happy to help if you get if you've got a difficult customer and they're complaining about something that you have or haven't done or they're being difficult in a way that you think actually do you know what them talking to my association or talking to someone at bbca would really help in you know um re-establishing trust there and you know BBCA backing you up in what you're saying and go yes actually you know what your contractor has told you is right and this is the reason it's right you know that can help with difficult customers sometimes so there's no one answer um but you know addressing it in as positive way as possible is is always going to be preferable um so Asad uh, what to do about a customer with a language barrier fabulous question by the way everybody I'm two minutes over I am aware of that. So I'll do this question with Azad. If we get any more coming through, I will I will send out an email as usual. Um, or you can give, just give me a ring direct. But yeah, so I've dealt with language barriers before. Um, working for a local authority in a large city, we used to deal with um, uh, so high rise blocks with, I don't know, there was, there was 15 floors. I think it was like 100 flats within it. And we had cockroaches and mice throughout you know from top to bottom so we had to gain access to all of these flats and of course there was I, I don't know how many different I can't remember back now but I think there must have been 15 different languages that were spoken within the building and not all of them spoke English so we developed um, flashcards for situations like that so we had a photograph of a cockroach on on this card and we we didn't have 15 different languages but we had I think it was 10 different languages 
um, you know, saying, do you have any problems with cockroaches kind of on this flashcard? And, you know, if we come to the door and we could tell somebody that had no idea what we were saying, we would use these flashcards and they would sort of, oh, right, yeah, we have, or no, we haven't. So that's one way. Um, but obviously on a, on a larger scale, if it's face to face, you know, I mean, find somebody that speaks the language, um, it, it can be very difficult. Or again, you know, with emails and things like that, they can be translated. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, if a customer, if you're carrying out work for customers, they, you know, an understanding of English to a degree is important for them as well to understand what you've done and what you've used. Um, and again, you know, trying to try and address that's tricky. Um, so flashcards one way, but I know that's not going to work in every situation. Maybe something to consider. Okay. Oh, okay. Ahmed, I will ask this one. I said I wouldn't, but we're only four minutes over. It's okay. Uh, what if you get a pest you can't identify? Send it. You can send pictures to us. If you're a BBCA member, <clears throat> you can send me a text message. I'll have a little nose. Um, if I'm not sure, I'll send it to some colleagues and we'll have a little chat back and forth. What's this? But you know, on some occasions, you actually need the physical insect to be identified by somebody. So you might, need, you want, might send it off to one of your suppliers. They might offer an insect ID service that you can use um uh, but yeah it's important that you do you do get a pest identified because in terms of customer service it's important isn't it because there's nothing worse than going to somewhere looking at an insect and openly saying to your customer oh i don't know what that is oh i don't know you know and you're on phone googling it so probably best to go oh yeah okay that's uh what i'll do i'm gonna go and have a look at my van and just see what tools i've got just get some ideas of what i can do to help you out you know maybe go and have a look at your manual that's in um um you know in your van have a look it up you know it's oh it's a fly and it's a fly right okay it's that species again you can do that yourself sometimes but if you generally need to send off a sample because you're not sure what it is absolutely fine just find the right person to send it to Okay, great, everybody. Well, listen, I'm, I'm five minutes over. Um, if there's any questions that you've got, um, that, you know, obviously they're not on here, but if you're typing away and you're like, no, Natalie, don't go, uh, just pop them in, a, in an email, the inquiries email, or the, you'll have a, a feedback request actually after this webinar. So you can always reply to that or, and get in touch with us and ask the questions that maybe you wanted answering here and we, we didn't get to. And also please give us great feedback. Now I want to know how you feel about these webinars and how they're delivered. Um, you know, I've been doing these two years now. We've kept the same the same structure, the same format. And, and, you know, you might have some ideas and think, do you know what, Natalie, it'd be really good if you integrated this into the webinars or you'd done it in a different way like this. Um, you know, really some good ideas would be really appreciated. Um, but yeah, thank you everybody for joining today. Hopefully that was of some assistance to you. Um, and yeah, go forth and have a wonderful day. Okay, take care now. Bye-bye.